appreciate um, the prayers and the comments of those of you who join us on YouTube and I always try to remember to acknowledge you. And I also lift you all up in prayer as I continue to appreciate the prayer that you lift up for me and my family and ministry. I also want to um, say today that you who find this video you and that have subscribed in the past may need to resubscribe because um, YouTube is censoring and um, deleting people and doing all kind of um, shenanigans against um, channels that's trying to um, get the truth out or just be Christ-like. So, it's a reminder that you may have to continue to um, subscribe and resubscribe because we've gotten comments from some of you who said that you were not getting the notifications and didn't know that um, that the videos was being posted. I don't have a whole lot to say today, but I guess it'll be a little bit continuation of what I've been speaking about over the last couple of weeks, that we are in a spiritual battle and the battle is for your souls. And um, to this past week, I was thinking about an event that took place in 2005 in Atlanta. A man um, named Brian Nichols had supposedly escaped from um, the Atlanta courthouse. And he ended up in a, you can look this information up on YouTube, this is public information. And um, uh, he had ended up in a lady's um, house whose name is Ashley. And again, all of this is allegedly Ashley Smith. And Ashley Smith says that she was able to um, talk the man down. Supposedly this man had killed several people before he left the courthouse. And she was able to share with him information from the Purpose Driven Life book. And as a result of, I mean, this was all over the news for days, uh, how this lady was a hostage in her house and how she was able to talk the man down to give himself up by talking about the Purpose Driven Life. And... Um, as a result of that, that book went viral all over the world. It was it sold millions of copies of, of that particular book. And all of the churches and people in their homes was um, going through the book list. They had books, um, activity books that you, you go through the book, you read, as you read through the book, you would end up um, being discipled <laughs> in a way that people didn't realize that they were being discipled. And before I go any further, let me give you a scripture as I'm speaking. 2 Corinthians 11 is coming to my mind that I need to share with you because I think that this is what was taking place back then. And it's really profound how the Lord um, gives me these messages every week. So the 11th chapter of 2 Corinthians. And let's read a few of these verses until I get to the one that I, I'm looking for. Um, let's start and let's just read it. It says, verse 1, would to, God, would, would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means, keep that in mind, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Being in Christ is simple. It's not based on rules and based on a lot of, I got to do this ritual or I got to follow this recipe. It's based on the simplicity of you loving him and him loving you and you acknowledging that you are his child. It says, for if he that comes preaches another Jesus, this is what I wanted you to see. There's another Jesus. 
and and the other Jesus is a counterfeit, and in order for a counterfeit, in order for a counterfeit to work, it has to be a good replica of the original. And so what the enemy is doing is he he threw excuse me he threw his deception excuse me one second if you have the Ruach Kakadesh in you and you being led and guided by the Spirit, when you come across a teaching that is another Jesus, the Holy Spirit is going to, there's something about that material or that information or whatever it is, is not going to sit too right with you. And so when this was happening, um, I had someone who was a member of our church purchase and gave to me um, a purpose-driven church um, and all of the paraphernalia that went along with the, um, the materials, um, the workbooks, where um, churches, um, well, the, the purpose-driven church was for the pastors to go through. And so everybody would be um, uniform. It wouldn't be the Holy Spirit leading it, but be based on you going through those workbooks and everybody taking a workbook at home and every day you have a daily thing that you went through. But as you read through the book, you will see that it was um, mysticism and um, things about Hindu and other types of religion that was being meshed and blended into what was being taught as Christianity, but it really was another Jesus. It wasn't the Jesus who is the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world, the only begotten Son of the Creator. And as a result of that, everybody in the evangelical world embraced that movement, okay? And as I was thinking about that this week, it occurred to me that that was that that's a that possibly that that was staged to to cause that movement to take place because we've we're being we're being discipled into new age. And so I I'm going back to at least I mean it was happening longer than that because back in the um late 80s or early 90s I was zealous for the things of God and I had um subscribed to uh, a subscription of um, Guidepost, which was a book by um, Norman Vincent Peale. He had so many supposedly Christian materials that um, was inspiring. And um, I'm trying to choose how I say what I'm trying to say because I don't want to say anything that's going to cause our channel to be taken down from YouTube. But I was greatly involved in believing that Norman Vincent Peale was a Christian, a Bible-believing Christian. And I bought all of his books. I bought all of his, I mean, I subscribed to the, it was a monthly book that came out that had a lot of inspiring testimonies and stories of things, supernatural things that took place um, with people. And that's what we were taught to um, go after the supernatural. And so um, the reason I'm sharing all of this with you is because as I was thinking about that this week, um, about the whole event that took place back in 2005, as I was praying and asking the Lord for what it was that he wanted me to share, because I'm always thinking and praying and, and, and researching and doing things, I received a comment from someone that I'm going to read. And it just blessed my socks off is why I have to share it. And it goes along with all of what I'm saying to you today. He says, saying thank you for your lovely presentations. I'm a former New Age investigator. Now, all of what I just shared with you about the books, the people, the organization, I believe that those people are new agers <laughs> and when the purpose driven book was out my spirit didn't agree with me with it so I didn't read the book 
um, I started reading some of it and I, I, it, I couldn't finish it. I, I just, something about it, the Spirit just told me to put it down and don't, don't go through it. So this person is saying, and there's another person whose books you can buy and look up that'll help even give you further enlightenment on this. And his name is Warren B. Smith. And he wrote a book some years ago called Deceived on Purpose. And he is a former New Ager, okay? So somehow the things that the Holy Spirit has led me to research and read and be curious about has really served to help teach me a lot of stuff. It was like God took me through his boot camp. Uh, someone had left a comment and asked if I was a school teacher. I'm a teacher who was taught by the Holy Spirit of the living God, and God really took me through some things. So he says, I'm a former New Age investigator and adopter or the adapter for many years, as well as early on in the Baha, the Baha'i, I think that's how you pronounce it, faith follower, have converted to a confirmed believer and follower of Jesus. Very eclectic and a serious in my pursuit of truth. And I'm eclectic in my teaching, I believe. Your mission, as you discuss in this video, is much like my own. And I'm happy to have found you on YouTube some time ago, two years or more. Your discussions are always interesting and uplifting for me. And I very much like how you delicately introduce some of the conspiracy concepts to the listeners. I just want to um, read that part about him being um, a former, a former New Ager. Um, thank you, um, because that's 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 one of the most awesome. The rest of his testimony, and you can go to the channel and read his comment for yourselves. But I was so blessed by what he described about him being a former New Ager and a former New Ager investigator and how he understands the conspiracies because the government termed the word conspiracy to use to discredit anyone who has been digging into the truth to try to understand the things that's going on in the world and how that Throughout, it seems, Christendom, the enemy has been, um, has infiltrated what might have started off as being a real belief in Christ and have perpetrated and taught another Christ. Most people don't know that there's another Christ, there's another Jesus that people have been teaching. And now what you see is, um, I mean, it's appalling to see the people who sing that they're singing gospel music. They look no different than the people who's of the world that's singing worldly music. The way they dress, the way they act, what they're teaching, what they're embracing. No one is sounding an alarm to warn the, the sheep. And so, um, and those of, of us who are trying to sound an alarm, people don't realize how spiritually, spiritually speaking we are being persecuted and attacked from the realm of the spirit. Another thing that I want to sh quickly share before I, I don't have a lot of scriptures, but the scripture I want to, um, what, what the uh, article I want to share with you is that you can look this up, where the FBI has released documents, because right now part of the, the, part of the deception is to cause people to embrace that there's beings from another galaxy or another planet um, and, the, and the church is sort of like not equipped spiritually to know the scripture because the scripture is the word of God. Your, the word of God is your weapon. It's your defense. But you can't just be speaking the word because the devil knows the word, it says in James, and the devil trembles. So unless you have had a real born again experience where you not just hearing the word, but you're living the word, if you're not living the word and you're speaking the word, the devil is not going to, going to respond to you speaking the word. Remember last week, and I'm going to go back and reread re the definition of these words because I think it fits with what I'm showing you today. The word seduce. I gave you the, defin the Bible hub definition of the word seduce. It means to attract or lead someone away from proper behavior 
or thinking. And some of the words associated with that is induce, entice, or persuade. Strong's Concordance um, 1818 is to, to deceive thoroughly, hoodwinked, enslaved by, deceived, into illusion. And so the scriptures that I'm going to share with you goes in sync with, with those definitions that I just gave you. Okay? Also, last week, I was talking to you about how part of the deception is, is all types of Bibles that are being released. And I shared with you that in the NIV Bible, I told you that I would give you the scriptures, and I did give you the right ones last week. It was Matthew 17, 21. So, in the NIV Bible, Matthew 17 has verse 20, and then there is no 21, and you can look this up. It goes from verse 20 to verse 20, 22. It, it just doesn't even have verse 21 in that. And that verse says that some only come out through prayer and fasting. Fasting is an awesome tool I was sharing with you. It's good for your physical body, and it taps you in closer to the spirit. of. It makes you more sensitive to the spirit world. So if you're not genuine, if you're lukewarm, and then you go into fasting, you can be like the sons of Sceva. But the enemy can put the beat down on you. You can read about the sons of Sceva in the book of Acts. So what I'm sharing with you today in all my teachings, and I've tried really hard, especially over the last three or four years, to tell people to really examine your hearts, to make sure that you're genuine with your relationship and your walk with the Most High. The enemy has infiltrated the evangelical church and neutralized the Word of God and watered it down. And the, the example that people are modeling and behaving is no different than the world. And so when you go to, the, when you go to what you call the building as being the church, people don't realize that the church is not the building, it's the people. But when people are brainwashed to believe that when they what, what takes place in a gathering or a building is the church, that means that it's ex, this is acceptable behavior. I can I can come to church and I can party and I can ha, I can laugh and I can have a good time and and I'm not drinking liquor, but I can smoke pot in the church and I can still be okay with God. That's part of the deception. People are being deceived. You don't have to deal with your sin. You don't have to change. And, and now what's happening is the people who say that they are, are truthers are really new agers. And what they're doing is they are acting as disciples for the new age movement, the age of Aquarius, the Atlantis, the dawn of the new age. And what they're doing is they're speaking adversely against the elites. But when you really take a step back and you look at them, what they really are being used for is, is discipling people into a new age, a, a, a Christ consciousness. Um, Donald Trump is the second coming of Christ because he's bringing Christ consciousness. Donald Trump considers Norman Vincent Peale as his um, pastor. So all of this is converging, and, and people who say that they are believers in Christ, they are sheep, and they are being led by another shepherd, and because they haven't had the real born-again experience, in John 10, the, the uh, Christ, real Christ is saying, my sheep knows my voice, and another uh, stranger, my sheep won't follow. So you got thousands of people who are sheep, and they're being led to follow a different shepherd. And they don't know because they didn't never get introduced to the real shepherd. And they don't know how to recognize the real shepherd because if they had been introduced to the real shepherd, they would realize that when you see people doing all of these symbols and when you see people doing all of this, that they, it, it takes effort to do this. It takes effort to do this. So when you see people doing that, they're telling you which God they really are serving. But because people are, in, um, people are naive 
and they're not discern, um, discerning and they don't have the Ruach HaKadosh to help lead them and guide them or check them. Because there's a check that gets into your spirit when, you, when you're hearing the wrong thing. Even initially, you may not be able to recognize it. But as you continue to pray and fast and seek the Most High, He'll reveal to you that something about whoever it is you're listening to or following, something about them is not right. And what I usually do is when I find new information, I usually binge on the people and let the Lord show me something that is not right or whether this, this is somebody I need to listen to. And not no one is perfect, so no one is going to get it all, just right all the time. So that's why you hear me say, eat the meat and spit out the bones. And some people are not on purpose trying to deceive people. Some people just didn't get to certain points yet. So you got to make give concession for that. Okay, because I'm not here to judge anyone or hurt anyone. I'm just here to give you information. And I, you know, I love the God and I love the people. And that's why you hear me say from time to time, I don't do this for money and you don't hear me talk about money because when people talk about money for me a red flag goes up because the scripture says freely you receive freely you give so if you got information that's going to help the body of Christ you shouldn't put a charge to it because you should want people to have the information because all of us who love God should love his people and we ought to want to help his people to grow in the things of God, grow in righteousness. And you know, I don't talk a lot about me because my job is to focus, cause you to focus on Christ and to help you to develop a relationship with Christ, not with me, but with Christ. I'm not here to get rich. I'm not here to be famous and I'm not here to be a celebrity. I'm here to exalt the most high, his kingdom and his son and his, you know, we don't, we shouldn't be pursuing our purpose, but we should be pursuing God's purpose. We should be pursuing his righteousness. And I'm going to show you that in scripture. In Matt, let's turn to Matthew 6. Am I making sense to you so far? Matthew chapter 6. God is so good. And that person's testimony about being a former new ager fits so perfectly with what I was um, thinking about and I was pondering in my mind, Father, how I'm going to be able to share about what happened with back in 2005 and how I believe that that was a setup to advance that movement. And some years after um, all of this took place, the man who authored that book lost his son to suicide. At least that was what was told to us that he committed suicide. You see, that's why it's, it's important to be in the right place with the Most High and not be promoting deception. So in Matthew 6, let's look at verse 33. You can tell I live in the inner city. <laughs> It says in verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So you don't need to um, be worrying about, about what you're going to do tomorrow or what you're going to wear. Let's, let's actually read a little bit more of this. Let's start, um, let's start at verse, let's see, 26. No, let's go up to um, 24. It says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. You're going to have to make a choice. Okay? It says, Therefore I say, and this is Christ speaking, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor for what your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body than raiment or clothes? 
Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, they don't sow, neither do they reap, neither gather and into bonds. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them, your heavenly Father feeds them. They don't gather, they don't reap, they don't sow. Are, not, are you not much better than they? He's asking a question. Aren't you better than they who don't do all of those things? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take you thought for clothes, raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of those or one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or whether with shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles, the word Gentile is, means one without God. All the Gentiles seek, because God is speaking, Jesus is now speaking to the um the Israel, the Hebrews. He's not he's he didn't yet call or made a way because he didn't die yet, so he didn't make a way for the Gentiles, which means one without God to be included in the kingdom. So he says, For after all these things do the Gentiles see. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all those things we just got through reading in those previous verses, all these things shall be added unto you without you even trying. You don't have to try. You just got to have the right relationship with God. And how you get that is through fasting and praying and not just fasting and praying and studying, but living it. You got to be a doer of the word. And James it says you can't just be a, a hearer only. You got to be a doer. You got to do, put into practice the things that you read, the things that you study. And you can't um, blame or, 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 or blame somebody else, your teacher, your pastor, or whoever, for your level of growth because it's up to each individual person to have that relationship with God where the Holy Spirit is lead you and guide you so that you will know whether your teacher or your pastor or whoever is giving you right information or not. So you can't put the blame on somebody else. And once you hear the truth and the Holy Spirit convicts you, I, I had an older gentleman who I was showing um, Daniel 2.43 about mixing, which is what the transhumanism um, gender agenda is, is in Daniel 2.43. And I was showing it to him. I was showing him so many scriptures. And he's part of a mega church. And he said that, you know, I need to get in the Bible more. And I know the things that's going on at this church is not right. But I feel as though I'm married to this church. He was married to the church so that even though he was hearing truth, he was seeing it in the word, he saw that the things that was happening in the building wasn't right, but he refused to leave. He continued to go to that place where he continued to allow his spirit to be fed by something that he understood scripturally and biblically was not right. So that's on him because the Holy Spirit made it so that he was given truth that he knew was the truth because he was reading it in his own with his own eyes but he refused to act on it so if you read the scriptures if you study the scriptures but if you're not a doer of what the scripture is telling you to do that's not going to do you any good that you're not entering into a relationship with God and if you can fast till, till you starve and you will not have any power or authority you just be opening yourself up to the spirit world and that's what I'm trying to tell you and a lot of people go to buildings and places where they shout they scream they dance but they don't have power um to be able to recognize deception when the deception is being shown to them. Even if they see it, they don't, they're not going to respond. And I've had, I can give you many examples of pastors who did this. 
after I gave them so much information to let them know what was going on. And so if you're not a doer of the word and a hearer only, you're just deceiving yourself, the scripture is saying. Okay, so it says, verse 34, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought, for tomorrow take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Every day got a sufficient level of evil. We just got to worry about today. But what happens is the enemy gets us caught up on worrying about tomorrow to disturb our peace. And when our peace is disturbed, the door is open for a spirit of fear to take over. But I'm telling you from my own personal experience, if you seek God with every strength and fiber of your being, if you fast and you pray and you do, you, you do your best to be a doer of his word, then the power of God will come upon you. And I'm going to show you that in, in Matthew 12. Matthew chapter 12. Let's go there. Matthew chapter 12, and let's look at verse 25. Am I making sense to you what I'm saying to you today? Okay, Matthew 12, verse 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts. He knew the thoughts of the people around him, what they were thinking. And said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolations. And that's what the enemy is trying to do right now is divide, divide God's people, separate them, isolate them, distance them so that they can be destroyed. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And I mean, you can see it. You can see how aggressively the enemy is trying to bring division in the world because to unite it, we stand. And this is what the scripture is saying. It says, let me read it again. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house, we are the house, divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then... His kingdom stand. That's why you got the new agers and you got the truthers. They're not divided. They, they, they're, they're together. They're standing together against God's people for to steal God's people's soul. And, and I'm going to show you that. It says, and if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do, you ch whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God, this is I wanted you to see, the kingdom of God has come upon you. You can't cast out any devils unless the kingdom of God has come upon you. And I'm telling you this from personal experience. You have to have the kingdom of God come upon you. That the living God is leading you. That you're not just going around saying you have the power to cast demons out of people. It has to be that God, the Holy Spirit, is leading you to do it. And His Spirit is upon you to empower you to be able to do it. And in these evil days right now, we need to be that close to the Spirit. That when the Spirit says go left or the spirit should go right, you know the spirit is leading and guiding you because deception is great in the world right now. Let's go to um, uh, Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew, we already in the book of Matthew, so it should be easy to get to chapter 24. God is looking for a people who will honor him, magnify him, and daily pray, thy will be done on earth. Not my will, not my purpose, but thy will be done on earth. We need to get away from all of that stuff right now. You can have billions of dollars and they're trying to supposedly collapse the economic system where people who has money in the bank might lose all of their monies if the system goes the way they are trying to do it. You need to be careful. Be careful what you invest in. Be careful where your money is. 
Be careful what you put your heart on because you could be rich today digitally and be poor tomorrow. But if you have the Spirit of God, He'll supply your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's why you need to have a close walk with Him. Okay? And verse 3, it says, And Jesus said to them, See you not all these things? Truly I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world, or the end of the world, or the end of the age as we've known it? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I came to, to bring you just one verse of Scripture. Take heed that no man deceive you. Deception was the first thing he mentioned. Take heed that no man deceives you. You don't want any man to deceive you. Okay? That's important. You don't want any man to deceive you. And now let's go to Colossians. And I'm going to close in Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 2. This is profound to me. How God is doing this, showing this. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 says, Beware, take heed, beware, lest any man spoil you. Now let me give you the let me give you the definition of the word spoil. Spoil is it's a term called it's all throughout the Old Testament. The spoils of war. Okay? The spoils of war in this case would be your soul. It says any profits or prize collected as the result of winning a war during some kind of military activity. Remember I told you we have to endure hardness as a good soldier. Soldier, being a soldier you, means you're part of some type of military. So this scripture is saying beware. <laughs> lest any man spoil you, take your soul from you. Through philosophy, new age philosophy, and vain deceit. Take heed, no man deceive you through philosophy, vain deceit, and the tradition of men, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. I got a text message this morning from a pastor saying, Merry Christmas. Look up Mithra, Tammuz. Tammuz is mentioned in the 8th chapter of Ezekiel. In Jeremiah, uh, uh, God was saying through Jeremiah, you, you cut down the trees and you put the silver and the gold on the trees. And then you bow down and put the gifts under it. So you're going after the tradition of men. You're not going after what Christ is telling, telling us not to do. You see, when you when God reveals the truth to you, you got you have a choice. Then, you you, you know I used to justify it. I used to say, um, well, it's, we know He came into the world, so why not celebrate on this time? You know that was my my rationing, my reasoning. But then I understood that why am I going to celebrate the birth of my Savior at the time of another Jesus Savior uh, birthday celebration? You see, take heed that no man deceive you. Beware, lest through the traditions of men and philosophy and vain deceit, you go after the wrong things. Take heed that you don't become part of a movement that is part of a possible false flag. Something that's not real, not some type of movie production. Remember I told you the black box. It's the enemy's way of discipling the sheep. 
You got to eat the meat and spit out the bones. You got to be careful what you're allowed to go into your eye and your air gates. Because it used to be, we thought we were being entertained. But we didn't understand we were being socially engineered. We were being programmed, mind controlled, and manipulated. And before you know it, through they and deceit, we've moved away from the real Christ. And without even knowing it or realizing it, you start embracing a false Christ. The Antichrist, through philosophy, vain deceit. You understand what I'm saying to you? You have to make a choice. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. It's a choice. And you have to be seeking diligently. God says you have to diligently seek him. Him who comes to him must believe that he is. In and, and, um, Hebrews 11. Those who come to him must believe that he is. And he's a reward of them who diligently seek. You got to be diligently, diligently seeking him. Seeking him. Every day seeking him. I'm not seeking things, Lord. I'm seeking your heart. I desire your heart, Lord. If there's anything about my life, Father, that is keeping me from having the right walk, the right relationship with you, Lord, reveal it to me. Help me get it right. Anything I'm doing that caused my name to not be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Someone left an awesome comment last week that, and, and that was one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 139, 16. Every day of my life is written in your book. My DNA is the book of life. Anything I do to change my book, to erase my name, to, to, to disconnect me from my Creator, to disconnect me from having a relationship. That's what all of this is all about. The, the, the philosophy is about disconnecting me from my creator so that I'm not connected to the real creator, to the real spirit of God. I'm connected now to, I, I belong now through a pattern to another Jesus. That's what this is really all about. And it's a battle, y'all. I'm going to tell you no lie. It's a real battle. To not be deceived. And no one but the Most High knows what I go through from one week to the next week to stay committed. Like in um, Luke 17 it says, when I return will I find faith in the earth. Because your faith, if you lose your faith, you're going to lose your soul. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Most High God. Okay, so Father, we just thank you today for your word. And we pray, Lord, that your word would be able to establish your will in the earth and would go far and wide and deep. And that people would, oh Lord God, be drawn unto you, Father, because of your word. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Yahusha Hamashiach. Thank you, Lord.